gas equation and combined gas loss. And there we have found an equation called PV is equal to NRT. Okay. <clears throat> so now we can also write this one that if I go for cross multiplication, what do I get? NRT by PV should be equal to one. This is obvious. Is it not? PV equal to NRT? NRT divided by PV is equal to one. Now, as we have drawn so many graphs, so here if you draw this graph, NRT by PV, okay? So this is one. So in that case, the graph should have been like this, straight line. Okay, against P. But very interestingly, dear, all the gases that we have in our nature did not follow this parallel line. Okay? It's very strange. Hmm. See. It's like this. Like this. Like this. Yeah? Like this. It's very strict. It did not follow. This is helium. Then this is nitrogen. Then this is CH4, methane. This is carbon dioxide. That's why it is like this. That is, we cannot say now that PV, NRT by PV is, sorry, sorry, I made a mistake. It should be. PV by NRT. Uh -huh. NRT. So we cannot say that PV by NRT for the gases which we come across is equal to one. But that will be a subfactor. So let us put here mm -hmm. Z. If that is not, if the ratio is not equal to one, then it will be some of some value. So we have put this one as Z. And Z is called, Z is known as compressibility factor. So people started thinking, what is the problem? All right, <clears throat> then we found. So, yes. So, your camera is so blur, cannot see anything. So, now what should I do? So, just wipe the. Ah, okay, camera. okay. Wait. Great concern that what is the problem? Because this this law we have read from combination of Charles law, Boyle's law, Avogadro's law. Okay, in those cases individually they were following, but when we combine them, then we find the combined loss or gas law does not follow. The gases do not follow this law. All this experiment was being done not by artificial gases. Is all done by real gases. So we found that the kinetic gas equation, what we have derived, is based on several assumptions. We have given some 
some some assumption because why do you have to go for assume it because we cannot see the gas assumptions are only made when things are not visible to us all right hmm? so many things we can happen in future yes we cannot see the future we assume this may happen that may not happen like this so this assumption whatever we made in a kind of gas equations so what are the assumptions we have made first assumptions we have made that the volume occupied by the gases is so negligible huh? if you compare with the volume of the container we can simply neglect their volume that is the first assumption second assumptions what did you make so the second assumptions we made that gas molecules are randomly moving in different directions in the process of the movement the gas molecules they collide with each other and they collide with the wall of the container so when they collide with the container huh, in that case they create the pressure all right and we say the gas molecules maybe millions of them are there in the container but they do not attract each other so again people started thinking whether the assumptions were correct or not whether some mistakes are being done so again the search was going on and let me explain here that what are the basic mistakes we have done while deriving kinetic gas equations see here see this is a gas container let's say it is being fitted with a piston and this is air tight so the gas molecules are here 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 now it is having the maximum volume all right like this okay now this piston we can compress so when you can when we have compressed the piston say here the piston has come here so what will happen now when the piston has come here all the gas molecules are being driven in a small space you know all the gas molecules are now here now as all the gas molecules are here now can you ignore their volume huh see this you cannot see but this one you you have seen now the fission is also going on this is a big cricket ground okay this is a big cricket ground and in this cricket ground how many persons they remain inside the ground any idea when the cricket match is going on how many persons they remain inside the ground tell now male and female both are interested for cricket or both of them both the parties they see so inside the cricket ground when the match is going on how many people are there inside the ground hello no idea can you hear me yes sir tell how many are there so 14 i don't know see 11 players are from the fielding side two players who are batting and two umpires so total how many hmm? 50 so but they are occupying such a small space in the ground we can ignore that space okay but when this player come to the dressing room the dressing rooms are not big in that case you cannot ignore their volume because they occupy a large space in the dressing room some of them may sit some of them may stand some of them even may lie down so we cannot ignore that volume that occupy in the in the dressing 
So same is the case here. Okay. So now, we say the gas molecules, they move randomly in any directions. But actually, that is a mistake we have done. Say, this is a footpath. Here is the, you are moving. You are walking in the footpath. Okay? You are walking in. Now, if another person has to cross you, he cannot come beyond this area. He has to pass you through this. So same is the gas molecules. So this is the gas molecule. If the gas molecule has to pass through this one, he has to maintain. See, if it comes this, then he collides through this. With, with the gas molecules. It collides with the gas molecule. That is, if we say that one gas molecule occupy only this space in the in that gas molecule in the in the container, then we are wrong. Actually, a gas molecules occupy this much space. If you have to go for free movement, others will come and collide. So we have mentioned that basic mistake we have mentioned. We say that gas molecules move randomly in any direction. So all the space which is, a, is present in the container is not accessible to the gas molecules. All right. If you don't understand, you will another example. See, this is your classroom. This is your classroom. So you can move in any direction you want. But mind it, your class molecule is not empty. Huh? These are the ben these benches, desk you have. So these are the desk. So in this case, you cannot walk over the desk. So how much space is available for your movement? This is the space that you have long. This is the space. Other spaces are occupied. So here also we have to do the volume correction. Entire space in the gas container is not available for huh? movement of the gas molecules. And this space is called excluded volume. Excluded. That is, you have to subtract this excluded volume from the volume of the container which you could mention as V. So we have to go for volume correction. Moreover, we say that gas molecule comes and hit the container of the wall. So these are gas molecules. It's going to hit this one. And when it hit it, it creates a pressure. That is the P. But another gas molecule is just following. We have learned about the intermolecular forces of attraction. So the speed by which, or the force by which the gas molecule is supposed to hit the wall of the container is now being reduced because the other molecule is pulling in from the back. Okay, say two persons are having huh, a fight. Okay, having a fight. Now, so in that case, okay, a third person came in, suppose he's about to hit this person. A third person appeared and he has found that it is not wise that they should fight. So he was about to hit him. He might have already reached but he has start pulling this one. So that the force by which is supposed to hit him, yes, because someone is pulling, that impact will be less. So similarly, the gas molecule which is following the molecule which is about to hit the wall of the container is being attracted or pulled by the other molecules. So what about the pressure that we have calculated in kinetic gas equation actually is less. 
why the other molecule has started pulling this one so we have to add that force by which is supposed to hit it so we will have to go for now pressure correction all right that is the reason for which all the problem has created all right so i am not going for a derivation of the volume correction and the huh, this so for volume correction we say the volume is v minus b so b is the yeah, is the excluded volume okay and pressure correction is p plus a by v square this is for individual gases now we are having large number of molecules of gas in the container okay so we are having large number of molecules of so what we can say for n number of molecules all right we say that volume is v and b and pressure is equal to sorry p a n square by this so now if you substitute this one in the main equation what do you get substituting the correct values of pressure and volume in ideal gas equation we get it is we we'll write now here p a n square by v square and b n b is equal to n r okay this is called equation of real gases why do you feel real gases because these all the gases are exist in the nature or we call it van der waals equation of state so this is called equation of real gases or we call it van v small van der waals equation of where a and b are the wonder walls constants okay so now right bhalo kotha okay now what is the significance of a and b c 
significance of wonder walls constants a n dear A indicates mutual repulsion between the gas molecule. Because see, we have gone for volume correction. No, we found that one molecule may go and hit the other molecule. Okay, so we have left some space so that they can move smoothly. smoothly. We are still, because of that, we find a lot of difficulty in working in the in a crowded place because everybody coming and pressing each other and uh, and colliding with each other. We feel very uncomfortable. We get irritated. But if everybody maintains a safe distance, everybody can work smoothly, even if the people are more. So in that case, this is a a calculates. The amount of excluded volume that it depends upon the repulsion. And second, B. B indicates mutual attractions huh? of gas molecules because when he's about to hit the wall someone pulls him back so b indicates the attractions of <coughs> of gas molecules sorry which attraction within indicate mutual attractions within the gas Even quite So what are the possible values of jet? Excuse me, excuse me. Z, this is equal to one, I told you, no. So in this case, Z can be more than one. Here Z is more than one. Then Z can be less than one. Here we find it is less than one. And <clears throat> again we find and third value is z is equal to one. So we find that for hydrogen and helium, <coughs> for hydrogen and helium, z is more than. Then for other 
Gracious. Okay. Z is less than one at lower pressure and with increasing pressure when the see whenever you put pressure the gas molecules put come nearer with increasing pressure when the gas molecules come nearer to each other then z becomes more than equal to one okay that becomes more than one and then now when z is equal to one what Z the value of Z can be equal to one when they behave as ideal gases so what is the condition of ideal gases the condition of ideal gas is that volume occupied by the gas molecules will be negligible that is the volume of the container should be very large and second when the gas molecules do not attract each other so that is only possible if the distances between the gas molecule is very very between the is very very large so there is only possible if the gas is being kept in a large container okay that is the volume should be very high we can say here this can be possible if gas molecules occupy large space and that is possible only yeah. see now you know boils law and charts law when the volume will be very large one if the temperature is very high if the temperature is very high you know temperature is directly proportional to the volume and second if the pressure is very low okay so now right I'm going to write one more sentence. Mm -hmm. 
the temperature at which real gases behave like ideal gases is called boil See, dear, liquefied gases are so important in our day to day life. That you cannot imagine. Hmm. Ki jam kurtam tande wale ni. See, in our house, in 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 our house, we are using liquefied petroleum gases. Hmm? Liquefied petroleum gases. Huge amount of liquid nitrogen is being used. Even in our aviation process, aviation process, we are using liquid oxygen. So, liquid, liquefied gases play a very, very important role. Okay? So now we know that when the gas can be liquefied. We know that in case of the, the, the existence of different substance in different shades of matter depends upon the intermolecular force of matter. Okay? When the attractions are very, very strong, in that case, these molecules come and touch each other. When they come and touch each other, then you find there's no space among them. And because of that, eh, they appear as solid. So in a solid object, we cannot penetrate. If you have to penetrate, then you have to use force. Mm -hmm. Just like that, we have to, when you want to put a nail inside a wood, we have to put a hammer. Okay, we can use force. So this is solid. In case of liquid, the molecules are closer, but there's some space is there. And this space they can adjust. So that you can put your hand inside. If you put your hand inside, the other molecule will go, it will be that set. All right? So, but in case of gas, the distances among them are large. So, if I am to make it liquid, we have to bring them closer. So, how can you bring them closer? We can bring them closer 
only when we apply pressure from both sides. When you apply pressure, they will come close. So theoretically, we thought that if we apply pressure, the gas molecules will come very near to each other. In that case, they should be existing in the liquid state. Okay, but one thing we forgot. If they already decided not to come closer to each other, huh? in that case, even if you bring them closer after some time, they'll move. If there are some differences among the two persons, and if a third person interferes and tells them, no, you have to work together, in that case, as long as the person is there, they will stay. Moment the person goes away, they again will move away from each other. So why they move away? Because they have kinetic energy. So if you wish this molecule should stay like that, in that case, you have to somehow decrease their kinetic energy. We know that we have learned from kinetic energy equation that kinetic energy is directly proportional to temperature. Okay, so in that case, you have to decrease the temperature. You have to decrease the temperature. All right, so when you decrease the temperature, then their kinetic energy decreases. All right, and as their kinetic energy decreases, they gradually lose their energy to move around. See, during when it is very cold outside, generally we avoid going out. Okay, so in that case also, when you decrease the temperature, the molecules lose their kinetic energy, their kinetic energy decreases, and that they lose their mobility and they come and stay nearer to each other. So, in case of liquefaction of gases, if you simply cool the liquid, then if you feel that it will be liquid. Sorry, if you simply cool the gaseous, gaseous substances, if you will, it will be liquid, then it will be wrong. And if you think, if you simply exert too much of pressure, then also the molecules will be liquefied, that also will be wrong. So you have to do both them simultaneously. As you go on increasing pressure, you have to go on decreasing the temperature. And then you'll find a temperature at which that suddenly you'll find the gas has started liquefying. And that temperature at which the gas is liquefy is called critical temperature. Okay. Liquefaction of Okay, so we will come across three terms. They are called critical temperature. So critical temperature I can define in two ways. What is the definition? It is a temperature above which gases cannot be liquefied no matter how much pressure is applied. Or we can say it is a temperature below which gases can be liquefied by increasing pressure. Okay. So, it is a Temperature at which gases can be liquefied by applying Or you can say 
It is the <coughs> temperature at which gases cannot be liquefied. Sorry, not at which, about which. Sorry. Gases cannot be liquefied no matter how much pressure is applied. Okay. You draw this one. Okay, let me finish the other definition, then I'll explain this. Now, this is critical pressure. It is the optimum Pressure, particular pressure is PC. It is the optimum pressure applied at critical temperature, means TC, to convert. Gases into liquid. That is, this is the pressure for here. You can. This much pressure is required to convert. 
This is for carbon dioxide. It is the volume of the gas liquefied at critical temperature AC by applying critical pressure PC. So done. Okay. So let us try to understand this curve. See here. <clears throat> when the, it is an experiment done with carbon dioxide, done by entry. <clears throat> see here. In this case, temperature for, at 40. See, this PV is exactly following the Boyle's law. Here also is exactly following the Boyle's law. But when you come to 30.9 degree, suddenly you will find a break. Means some amount of the gases are getting converted into liquid. So this is the critical temperature. Now see here. Why in this case it is flat? See, in this case the volume is neither decreasing, it is remaining constant. Here is also like this. But at this point, suddenly you find the volume starts decreasing. See, moment a gas becomes liquid, it volume contacts because gas molecules come nearer to each other. Now what does it mean here? These two. That is, see, suppose you have taken, say, one cup of water yeah, in a saucepan and you start boiling. You have seen the vapor is coming out. You can observe also. We know that temperature of water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. You put a thermometer, you find it reads 100 degrees. But does it mean, dear, entire amount of the water, moment the water has reached 100 degrees, theoretically, 
entire amount of water should have in one shot should have been contained to vapor no it takes lot of time why because water gets converted into water vapor at 100 degrees celsius and some amount of water remains in the liquid state that is the state we call they are in equilibrium both the gas phase and the liquid phase has attained the same temperature and they remain there for long time as long as entire amount of the water is not being converted into liquid so in this case the density of the vapor density of the water vapor and density of the, of the liquid water remains same so in this case a small portion is liquid right now when i apply it, huh? in this case what is going to happen see here in this case this this is it means what here in this case the liquid carbon dioxide as well as the gaseous carbon dioxide having the same density because of that the volume is not different but but what is the but here gradually the carbon dioxide is getting liquefied and as it progresses more and more amount of carbon dioxide become liquid here entire mass of the carbon dioxide has become liquid and then only the volume start to decrease so these are the places where you find that both the gas phase and the liquid phase they are coexisting and that density is same so this we learn from the andrews car see how people utilize this experiment in our day to day life you cannot imagine this is a very simple example but application is the most important see we extract different things from nature for our day to day purposes maybe ayurvedic medicines see ayurvedic medicines we get it from the plant earlier what people used to do people used to take those plant crush take out the juice okay but enter amount of the juice is not useful for us there is if i can remove the liquid portion i can convert them into into solid and i can convert into a tablet so what they used to do they used to extract it with water and after that they eh is to evaporate the water and ultimately they used to get the residues but in the process of boiling these biomolecules they undergo decomposition so in this process maximum amount of the compound gets spoiled a small amount is useful for us so the same medicine you to continuously take for long time because biomolecules you have to extract them at the condition at which they are found to be eh, suitable for them we call it in vivo condition so after that people started using organic solvents because biomolecules are organic organic solvents directly but many of the organic solvents are extremely harmful for us all right then how to do it acha i think you have already used did you use instant tea i'm not taking, talking about tea bags instant coffee you have taken but instant tea you did not take see tea how do you mean we put tea leaves in the hot water okay and after keeping it for some time we strain it and we get the tea but in your process of journey every time it may not be possible for you to carry everything with you you can get hot water you hot water you can carry in your flask or you can get it anywhere so if you have a packet of instant tea then get hot water and put that tea mixed with sugar and milk just cut the packet pour it in water and immediately you find it goes into solution and you can take it same is the case of instant coffee so how they they started making it they have now use highly pressurized carbon dioxide highly pressurized carbon dioxide 
they acquire the almost the density of the liquid carbon dioxide. So liquid carbon dioxide can be used as solvent. It is not only the water we use as solvent there, yeah, or not the organic substances. There are various liquid substances that are being used as a solvent and we call them as non-aqueous solvents. So what they do? Say, this is a tube. This tube is being packed with This tube is being packed with tea leaf, okay, or coffee powder. You, are, you have made coffee, you find when you put coffee, every amount of the coffee does not go into solution. After finishing, you find the residues are there. And they send highly condensed carbon dioxide here. Okay, and this, this tube opens into a large container. So carbon dioxide, like your hot water or water, it dissolves all the substances that we drink in the form of coffee or tea. So it will dissolve, okay? And it will come out. When it comes out, see the volume is very large. So we know P is inversely proportional to V, or you can say V is inversely proportional to P. We, we have already learned from Andrew's curve that only under high pressure, the gases can be liquefied. So when the volume is very large, immediately the liquid carbon dioxide becomes, becomes gas. And all the thing that it has carried out, it now drops in the, at the bottom of the container. So by that way, we get instant coffee, instant tea. Same is the case, we extract different herbal medicines in the purest form, okay? So this is being used. See, one more experiment I can tell you. This you can show it in, 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 in a science exhibition. Okay, say you have taken a, a, a container, glass container, and this you fill it with water, and this say you make it airtight. Then you put it in a hot plate. See, people can see this is liquid and this is, this space is empty. But you know what is there? In empty places, the water vapor is there. You go on boiling. Suddenly you'll find nothing is there in the, in the container. You know it is there, but others, they don't know. They look strange, become very strange. Hurry, what happened to the water? Well, you see that they can also come and feel it to the hand. You find that no water was coming out. Why it is disappear? See, water you can see and the empty space you can observe only because there is a difference of density is there. When you started heating it, more and more, liquid water has been converted into water vapor. A time comes, density of the water vapor and density of the liquid water has become same. So there is no debarkation in between. So you'll find it will disappear. Switch of this, switch of the hot plate, you'll find again the water will get, get cooled in that after some time, the density of the liquid water will be more, vapor will be less, why? Because more vapor has got condensed into liquid water, again the layer will appear. All right? Sometimes it happens, you might have seen also, it happens, suppose there is a heavy shower is there, too much of rain. Suppose in nearby your house on pond is there, suddenly you'll find the pond has disappeared. Why? 
along with the rain the water vapor has condensed has come very near up to the surface of the water so much of water vapor is being generated in that case you'll find the density of the water vapor and the pond water has become same suddenly you'll find that the lake has disappeared the water body has disappeared all right is that's because of this okay now see in your syllabus this year liquid state is removed so i am not going to tell huh but in liquid state something we should know it is called vapor pressure so immediately you can say pressure exerted by vapor is called water vapor vapor pressure no is not that it is correct but not scientifically not correct we know as i told you that liquid when evaporates it gives you vapor okay but we know about the kinetic gas equations they move in all directions okay so this is a container here you are having liquid so on the when when this goes hits comes back again comes hits and time may come again it will come and will fall on the surface of the water water will absorb it so what will happen a continuous process of conversion of the liquid water to water vapor takes place and water vapor get condensed to give you liquid that state of continuous movement between two phases is we call it in is in a dynamic equilibrium so what will be the definition of water vapor pressure is it the is it the pressure of the vapor when it attains a dynamic equilibrium means what what is dynamic equilibrium amount of the gas molecules will always remains constant if five of them has been converted into liquid immediately the liquid will be five molecules in the vapor state that is called dynamic equilibrium all right you have seen suppose at the beginning of when the school starts though you do not have luck this to attend the classes in the school say so the capacity of the school is classroom is 50 50 have admitted but five of them has moved to a better school or maybe that their parents got transferred immediately school is going to admit five more hmm they are going to five more so that is called huh so same is the case you will find water vapor so in that case what will be definition of vapor pressure so we will say vapor pressure <coughs> it is the pressure exerted by vapor when they exist in dynamic equilibrium with the liquid now on what what factors depends upon what are the factors control vapor pressure okay vapor pressure is dependent on some factors one nature of the liquid if the intermolecular forces of attraction of the liquid is stronger in that case the rate of evaporation is less you will find in your house winter you are using glycerin glycerin is liquid water is also liquid but glycerin is very dense why because intermolecular forces of attraction of the glycerin is higher than than that of the liquid water so glycerin bottle if you keep it outside also is not going to evaporate so fast but water evaporates is better fast so it depends upon the nature of the liquid all right so <clears throat> intermolecular forces of attraction second evaporation is a surface phenomenon evaporation only takes place on the surface what is the difference between evaporation and boiling in boiling you will find entire liquid is taking part huh bubbles are coming out from all layers of liquid so bulk, boiling is a bulk phenomenon entire body takes part in but the evaporation takes place on the surface so if larger the surface area faster will be the rate of evaporation see after washing our cloth why do you put it in the washing line and we keep it very stretched if you keep it in one place the cloth does not dry because the surface area is less if you stretch it give a wider surface the water dries water evaporates so vapor pressure also depends upon the surface the surface area see if you have given a hot cup of tea or coffee you are you have very less time why do you pour it in the plate because 
plate has a wider surface area, evaporation increases. Okay, so it depends on the nature of the liquid, it depends upon the surface area. And third, it is directly proportional to temperature. If you increase the temperature, evaporation is faster. All right. So this why I'm explaining the vapor pressure. The reason is vapor pressure is required for our class two classes. Now we'll go for surface tension. Surface tension. I'm, I'm not going in detail because it is not there. See here. A molecule inside is being attracted from all sides. Okay. But what will happen to the molecule on the surface? See. These are happening on a day to day life. So you know. See, here the molecules are only being pulled inside here, pulled inside. And there is no other force to neutralize this. Nothing is there on the top to neutralize them. So the molecules are being pulled inside. In that case, due to inward pull, the molecules, water, this surface area of the liquid should have been like this. But actually, it does not happen. It remains like this. If an object is bent, how do you make it straight? Either by pulling this one, we may pull from this side, or you can push from inside. So the liquid surface remains plain and smooth only because some forces are acting perpendicular to the plane. So that because of that force, the surface remains plain. And that force is called the surface tension. See. If you have taken a glass of water or cold drink, and if you have put a straw, if you put a straw, do you think that liquid inside the straw you may have the same same level that you have seen? If the level is same or not? Huh? No, level is not same level is higher. Why does it go up? See, all this liquid are being inwardly pulled. So moment you make an opening there, yeah, the force of this force now pushes the liquid inside and it goes up. Due to this region you'll find from the ground, the water comes out in the form of fountain or, or spring because of surface tension. Surface tension is a very, very important thing. But I'm very sorry it is not being included. So I want to don't create any force on you. Now, what is viscosity? Viscosity. See, some of you are using during mustard, sorry, uh, coconut oil. Some of you are using glycerin. And some of you are using water. Take equal volume of glycerin water and the uh, coconut well in three bottles and try to pour it. You'll find water will immediately come out. Glycerin takes the longest time. Why does it happen? It depends upon the viscosity. Because when the, when the liquid flows, see, when the liquid flows, dear, this tube does not move. So tubes keeps on pulling them. So a friction is developed between the moving surface and the this immobile surface. So that friction, because of this attraction, liquids are being hold backwards. And by this way, they come. So this, this type of movement, that phenomenon, we call it viscosity. OK? So if I get time next year, so for your entrance, I can discuss. So now, next chapter that I'm going to take with you is the thermodynamics. After thermodynamics, I shall move to organic. Thermodynamics is an entirely new thing that you have not studied in any form in your school. 
So thermodynamics I cannot go fast. Okay, and I, I told you that by the end of this month, I shall try to give you some brief summary on these five chapters that I have, four chapters that I have taken till now. What are those some basic concepts? Then uh, atomic structure, then uh, classic, at least you can get yourself prepared. And uh, I don't know when your school, the uh, unit.